Hey guys, and welcome back to another video here with Angel Bee Designs. If you are new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Um, so in my last video, I did a, um, uh, I sublimated a dry erase board from, um, uh-oh, my thing not plugged in? Hold on, guys. Um, but I sublimated a, um, a dry erase board from Dollar Tree. And in that video, I, I said, if you guys wanted me to show you how I designed the image to drop a comment, I did get some comments where people were asking me to go ahead and show them how I designed the image and I am using Canva Pro. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I am going to show you how to, how to design an image and then I'm going to take it over to Silhouette and show you how to subtract it again, even though I did show it in the other video, but I'm going to show it from start to finish, how I um, designed, downloaded, uploaded, and then sliced with the template this image. I'm not going to print it or sublimate it again because I already did that in my last video. So check out my last video. It was the one right before this. Um, if you want to see me sublimate it today, I'm just going to show you how to prep it to print it so that you can get it sublimated. Okay, that's what we're doing today. But this is the image that I created. Um, I don't really sell my crafts. So I just um, sublimated this design for my son to play with. He does like Sesame Street. Um, so I thought it would be like a cute little toy for him to have. So this is the image that I made for him. Okay, and now I'm going to go to my home screen here so that uh, I can do it start to finish with you. Okay. So right now I'm in Canva Pro and I will leave a link down below. If you would like to try Canva Pro free for 30 days, I'll have a link down below. Just click the link and then you sign up for the free trial and you get it for 30 days. If you decide you don't want to use Canva Pro, just make sure you cancel it prior to and they will send you an email letting you know that your trial is about to be up um, before they charge you as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go over to create a design now and then we're going to go down to custom size. Um, now I did measure my dry erase board from top to bottom, and that's including the handle. So from the top all the way down to the bottom of the handle, and then from the widest part to the other widest part of the dry erase board is how I got my measurements. Okay. Those measurements were 7.9, which is wide, and then 9.9 .9 tall. Okay. So I, um, again, my dimensions are 7.9 by 9.9. .9. And I just measured from the very top of the dry erase board all the way down to the very bottom of the handle, all the way down to the handle. And then I measured widest part to widest part. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of a, a template within a template. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my elements and I'm going to get a box because this box is going to represent the top part of the handle. I'm sorry, the top part of the fan, not including the handle. So if you're looking at your dry erase board, you have your handle part and then you have a rectangular kind of shape that sits on top of the handle. This is the part where your image is going to go like the bulk of your image, okay? And then the handle part, you can sublimate like a design onto the handle so that it matches, or you can leave it white or whatever you wanna do. Um, for me, I did do the red gradient on my handle and I will show you how I did that. But for the, the rectangular part, which is gonna be the bulk of your design, what I did was I measured from side to side and then top to the bottom where the handle, where the rectangular part stops and the handle starts. That's the part that I measured to get this part of the template. Okay, and I actually have to grab my fan, my dry erase board, because I don't remember those measurements off the top of my head. So I'm literally measuring it right now, which is, we're gonna go all the way to the edge. And then obviously, which is about 7.9 inches. I did eight just so that I have a little bit of extra wiggle room. <clears throat> and then I'm measuring from the top all the way to the part of the fan where it starts, which is six inches. 
So if you see this box, this black box where the height number is going up, I'm going to drag that down until it says six. Okay. This, now this box is going to represent the, the part of my fan that um, is going to be where my image is. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I want to use a gradient for the background. So what I'm going to do is this is the gradient. You just go over to elements. You type in gradients. And then you can go to graphics. And it's going to give you a bunch of different gradients here. OK, I picked this first one, which is available in the free version. OK, and then I'm just going to go ahead and stretch this out to kind of fill that box. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and delete this because I don't need it anymore. This gradient is pretty is pretty much the same size that I need it to be. And then I'm going to change this to red. OK, so this is going to be the background for my image. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead I'm, and I'm going to start designing. And like I said, my son does like Sesame Street. So I did get these. Um, I got these from Etsy. OK, so I brought in this image. I'm going to go to edit image and I want to add a shadow onto him. I'm going to go to drop shadow. I'm going to click on settings, the transparency. I'm just going to make it to where it's, you can see it more and it's not as blurry because I want him to be defined because the background is red and then he's also red. So I just want to make sure that you can see him. Okay. Then I got this little trash can guy here. I don't, y'all, I don't know their name. So don't, don't cut me too deep. Okay. And I'm really just designing this to make it look basically how I want, okay? All uh, right, so I like that. Then I'm gonna get, I got Cookie Monster, and I don't know his name. And then I'm gonna move him up here, but I'm gonna position him backward, backward. I want him to be underneath Elmo. And then I did forget to add my drop shadow onto this guy here, drop shadow. And I'm going to click the settings. And I'm going to do the same thing. Make the transparency less and not really blur him out because I want to make sure you can see him. And I'm going to do the same thing for Cookie Monster. OK, so that looks good. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up to Elements. And I'm going to get. <clears throat> a frame, a circle frame, which is right here. If you go to elements and you scroll down, this circle frame is available for the um, free, is, is available in the free version. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a black border to this. And actually, there is one in here that has a border. Let me see if I can find it. Mm, here it is. OK, and I'm going to delete that one. And this one is available for free users as well. So I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to turn this black. So now I have my black border, OK? Next thing I'm going to do is go to my uploads, and then I'm going to find an image of my son. And we're just going to basically drag and drop it into the frame. That's what I really like about the frames is that um, it's really just drag and drop. So here's the image. I'm just going to drag it, drop it, and then I want to adjust it a little bit. So I'm going to double click, double right click. I'm sorry, double left click. And then I'm just going to adjust it. And that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and move that up there. I do want to turn it, angle it just a little bit. And then I'm going to position this backward, backward. OK, that looks good. Now, the next last thing I need is the, the Sesame Street logo.
And then I do believe I added a drop shadow to this as well. All right. I just want to make this a little bit bigger. All right, that looks good. So that was literally all I did. I just got some images and I did purchase this um, Sesame Street package with these uh, characters from Etsy. So you can just go to Etsy, type in the search bar, um, Sesame Street images or PNGs, and that's how I got that. Okay, so now for the handle part of it, I'm basically gonna go into my elements. And I'm gonna select this gradient that we used before. And I'm gonna turn it upside down so that the dark part of the gradient is on the bottom. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it smaller. I'm basically just going to fit it just like that. And then I'm going to turn it red because it's it, it's basically going to be like this is where the handle is going to go. Okay, so I didn't want my image to be where the handle is. I just wanted it to kind of fade into the red on the handle part. And I'll show you once I crop it. Okay, that's literally all I did for my image. So my image is good to go, ready to download. So what I'm going to do is go up to share. I'm gonna select download. We are not gonna select transparent background. We don't need it because we're just gonna crop all this out anyway. We are gonna download this as a PNG. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna download this image. All right, and then I am going to go ahead and drag that onto my desktop so that I can find it. And then I'm gonna open up my Silhouette Studio. Now I do have the business edition. Now I'm not sure if you can do this in the free version or not, I've never tried it. I just know that um, I do have the paid business edition. So with the paid business edition, um, you are able to do the subtracting and the cropping and everything that we need to do. Um, but again, I'm not sure if you can do it in the free version or not. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am just going to go ahead and bring in the image that I just saved to our desktop, which is right here. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also bring in our template, which is this one. And I did get this template from Etsy. You can just go on to Etsy and you can search... Um, uh, Dollar Tree Sublimation uh, or Dollar Tree Dry Erase Board Template and it should just come right up. Um, so now I have the template and I have my image here. So all I'm going to do is I am going to size the image to fit inside of the template. So can you see how it pretty much fits exactly once you stretch it out? And then the handle, you're going to have that gradient effect. So it fits perfectly once we stretch it out, okay? There is a little bit of corners here. If you wanted to just print this image just like this, you could. You don't have to crop it if you don't want to. So if you wanted to just go ahead and print this image just like this, just make sure you use the template to size it so that you know that it's gonna fit on your actual, um, on your actual dry erase board. But then if, you, if you're not able to subtract it because you have the free version and maybe the free version doesn't allow it, if you wanted to print the image just like this, you can, it'll fit. And then you can just manually cut it or you don't even have to cut it. Just make sure you use some butcher paper on the top and on the bottom underneath your um, dry erase board as well as on top because you're gonna get some bleeding because there's gonna be some extra here. So as long as you use some butcher paper to catch any excess bleeding that comes off of your image, you can print it just like this. You don't have to crop it if you can't for whatever reason. But if you do want to crop it, um, then like I said, we're just going to go ahead and make sure that it fits. And then we're going to select both. We're going to go over to our modify panel here and we're going to select 
subtracts, okay? Then we're gonna click away and then we'll click back and we should be able to just remove our image here, okay? So we're gonna delete all of that. And now we have our fan template, okay? And that we know that it, this is exactly how it's going to look on our fan when we go ahead and we sublimate it. It came out perfect. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it, okay? Maybe, I think I cut off his eyes a little bit here, but that's okay, all right? So um, I did print this. My Now, if you have a smaller format printer, I also have a small format printer. Um, I have that the Epson EcoSync 8500, which prints eight and a half by 11 which prints eight and a half by 11. The rear feed does allow to print eight and a half by 14. So that's what I'm using. I'm using my rear feed and I'm using eight and a half by 14 sublimation printer or sublimation paper to go ahead and print this. Um, but I just wanted to show you in this video exactly how I designed the image in Canva Pro and then how I use the template um, to subtract it and everything in Silhouette Studio. And then I'm going to print exactly, or I'm sorry, I'm going to print directly from Silhouette Studio on eight and a half by 14 paper using my rear feed. Okay. But that is all I have for this video. If you actually, if you want to see the actual sublimation process where I printed it off and I used the lamination paper to get it onto the dry erase board, check out the video right before this. It'll probably be in one of the cards somewhere. It's probably the first card that I attached at the beginning of the video. Um, but definitely check out the video right before this. I did sublimate it onto the dry erase board using lamination, using a lamination roll. But that's all I have for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until the next time, bye-bye.